What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, DJ T Stomp, and studies show that I have very little time to hold your attention, right? So bear with me. If you're on my boat, I'm sure you've been hearing yadi this, caribou that, yadi this, caribou that, yadi this, caribou that, all month. So you're probably wondering what's happened, and you probably clicked this video because you might have heard some dramatic stuff happen last night, right? And I'm gonna get you caught up on everything, start to finish in detail, and I'm gonna do it really quick, and we're gonna dive into this. Bear with me, don't click off. Let's see what happened. Lil Yachty, Caribou, here's the breakdown, right? So this all stems back to a few months ago, right? Lil Yachty announces his new group, the Concrete Boys, right? Now this is Yachty's like second attempt at trying to do a group. I remember back in like 2018, 19, Yachty tried his hand at doing a group, but it didn't really go anywhere. But Yachty's seen a big resurgence, so it makes sense for him to try to do a new group, right? Let's see, you could probably say Yachty's greatest years were like 2015 through 2018, but in the last couple years, he's had a resurgence. For one, he did Michigan Boy Boat that people liked. He did that experimental album that people have praised him. And the most obvious one is that he became Drake's spokesperson, right? He's always talking about, you know, what Drake thinks. He talked to Drake, he heard this. On top of that, he's got multiple songs with Drake. He's been heating up. Yachty is back, right? So he starts this new group, the Concrete Boys, with a couple members, Caribou, Camo, DC2 Trill, and Draft Day. Things are going pretty good, right? They team up, they drop their next album right here. It's called It's Us Volume 1. Now, to my knowledge, this album was very, very well received, right? Very well streamed, people liked it, people were embracing the new members, which is rare because normally, when you start a group and you try to shove random artists onto people, they're not too, uh, they don't, uh, they're not too open to it. But that wasn't the case with this. In fact, they did so well that Yachty put them on tour. The It's Us tour started in Miami, ended in Atlanta. But you know this tour went well because they were doing, this is an East Coast group that was doing dates in Sacramento, Oakland, LA, Denver. That tells you, you know, enough that this group was doing really, really well, right? Now you're thinking, Bro, you're boring me. What? Why are you? What's going on? Why? How is this gossip and beef? Stay with me, right? About a month ago, we see something unusual happen, right? Now, Caribou is the most. Uh, she's the member of the group that people are gravitating to the most, right? Everybody knows her. The other guys are cool, but Caribou is the person that everybody starts gassing up, right? Then something strange happens. Fans appear to think Caribou has left the Concrete Boys after noticing she's been taken out of the group's bio. She did not perform along Concrete at the Broccoli City Festival yesterday. This remains unconfirmed. Boom. Gone from any of the Instagram. No connection on Instagram and social media. And then the group performs at Broccoli City Festival and she's nowhere to be seen, right? So she was pretty noticeable, right? And this is really strange, right? What makes it strange is, you know, she just started getting hot. She just started blowing up because of this group. And the moment things get good, she leaves, right? Now, a little backstory is before she was even rapping, she got her start as Lil Yachty's assistant, right? She was helping Lil Yachty with a bunch of things. Apparently he fired her or something at some point. And then she got added to this group and then her rap career started taking off. So Yachty has given her no shortage of opportunities, but the moment the opportunities got really, really good, she bounces. Now, what is unusual about now, what is usual about this is the fact that when rap groups start, people come and go, right? Look at the early days of Cash Money, the early days of No Limit, the early days of MMG, the early days of Taylor Gang, right? There are people that came and went, right? If you looked at the, the all time Cash Money roster, I'm sure you're going to see 50 names of people you've never heard of or seen before, because there are people that were probably on Cash Money for six months, then bounce, if even that. But that happens, and then Yachty confirms it. Roll the video. I'm gonna say this at one time. Huh? We uh, have split ways with Kara as far as this concrete. Um, I don't have nothing. I have nothing to say. Nothing bad to say. Nothing negative to say. Um, about Kara, I wish her um the best in her career and uh, um yeah that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it i don't have anything anything really bad to say or anything good to say 
we just split, you know? And um, I wish the best for Kara in her career. So I, I, I would never, I'm never gonna speak on it again. So that's it. Which mean what I mean concrete's still concrete. And though we're not no one's replacing her. I'm not looking for another girl. Nah, we're not. No one's trying to replace Kara Kara. That's that. We'll leave that at that. Now Yadi is pretty chill about it, right? He doesn't really want to keep bringing it up. He just wants to move on, right? He's got his group of other guys. They're still doing well. He wants to keep pushing this group. He doesn't want to let this caribou drama overwhelm him. Caribou's not saying much either. Yadi's not saying much. He just addresses it in a little IG video. And things go on. Until last night, things got very dramatic. Yadi goes on Instagram Live, right? Lil Yachty goes live to expose Caribou after a fan said she was bullied and kicked out of the concrete, the concrete boys. Here's the live. Bro, go ahead and tell people how you talk to people. How you tell my security guy, oh, you homeless, oh, you work for me, oh, uh, we are, uh, we, you ain't got no, you're poor, and, uh, we above you, and how you, you talk to people like they nothing. You talk to people like they, like they small, like they, like they beneath you. Bro, bro, hold on. Tell people, tell people how, tell people how you verbally abuse people. How you told me you gonna spit on me when you see me. Tell people how you talk to people, bro. How you, how, how you, how you, your brain is clinically imbalanced, bro. How you disrespect people. How you, how you go around treating people in your everyday life. I've been letting you do this whole thing where you act like you like a princess and you sweet. And you know, like, oh, you just such a good girl. Bro, stop the front, bro. We didn't, inter internally, we have withheld your actions since the beginning of me giving you this career. What are we talking about, bro? What the fuck are we, what, yo, what the fuck are we even talking about, bro? You don't even do nothing. You, what the fuck? Yo, bro. It's so crazy to me, bro, because I fucking, I, I, I've given you a career. And time and time, you just disrespect me. I wrote every fucking verse you've done. I, I dressed you. I dressed all five of y'all niggas, bro. I dressed five niggas every time we stepped out the house. I put an outfit on everybody. I put eight carat earrings in everybody ear. I put three chains on all y'all neck. We bought a Cartier watch. I gave you that chrome Rolex. Bro, you the most dis you what you was watching tables. You was you was you was you was waiting. What are we talking about, nigga? I changed your motherfucking life. And you on here lying, talking about some we bully you? That shit got me fucked up, bro. Bro, you got me fucked up, bro. You disrespectful, bro. You talk to people crazy. You tell people that they are nothing. You tell people you're gonna spit on them. You you tell people they poor and you talk to the you talk to my fucking label crazy. You claim I was stealing money from you, bro. Stealing money from you how, nigga? Now Yachty revealed a lot of things here, right? Remember, Yachty was keeping it chill, but fans kept egging on the situation because they really wanted to know what happened, right? The first is that he made it known that he never mistreated her. In fact, she was actually the one shitting on everybody, acting as if everyone was below her. You know, really. Being a celebrity when, once again, she's not that lit yet. Then Yachty pulls a Kanye West Taylor Swift moves and he makes it known like, look, I made you famous, right? And it makes sense. Remember, she was Yachty's assistant. Yachty put her in the group, but Yachty reveals something even more. Yachty lets us know that he was penning all of her verses, including her freestyle, which man, the fact that he wrote this freestyle was heartbroken because that freestyle was bubbling in the streets man side note though on the radar why are you letting people come in with pre-recorded freeze what, what are you doing keep if you're gonna do a freestyle platform make sure people keep it authentic come on man now yadi even went and posted the reference tracks but i'm not gonna play them for copyright purposes and the last thing was apparently yadi was stealing money from her which already doesn't make a lot of sense right Reason being is one, Yadi is obviously way, way richer than her. Two, 
I don't think she's generated that much money to steal. I mean, you can go look through her streams. The bulk of them probably come from that collab album that it, she did. She doesn't really have any big streaming songs on her own. She doesn't have songs that are playing on the radio to get a bunch of royalty. Um, I don't think she's getting booked for shows that much. And even if she is getting booked for shows, her show price isn't that high. So how Yachty could be stealing money from her doesn't make a lot of sense. But Yachty actually goes around and makes it known like, yo, you're damn near a million dollars in debt to me for everything I've done for you, which was like the, the game winning shot when it came to this IG rant, right? So Yachty completely unloaded on her and didn't get, let her catch a break, right? Then I see this very iconic tweet from House Phone. He says, we got to start saying no Yachty before you flex what you did for somebody. So yeah, man, no Yachty, man. That, let me give this a retweet because this is facts. And then lastly, we have this iconic tweet from Caribou where she says, I don't say too much because I know stuff going to unfold on its own. Wow. <laughs> stuff did unfold on its own. Now, what do I think about this, right? This was objectively a very stupid move on Caribou's part, right? And there's one very obvious reason why, right? This right here is the 48 laws of power, right? And the very first law of this book that you can see right here is law one, never outshine the master. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but it's law one, never outshine the master, right? This is a law everybody follows pretty well in hip hop, right? Drake doesn't outshine Lil Wayne. We haven't seen Meek Mill outshine Rick Ross. We haven't seen any of the CMG members try to outshine Yo Gotti. Cause you gotta remember these people, you know, they did something for that person, right? You don't want them looking at you as competition. You always gotta pay your respect in life for what people did for you. Two, I don't know what Caribou was thinking because you gotta remember, nine, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say 90% of her blessings musically have come from the Concrete Boys, right? She hasn't demonstrated that she's this star artist on her own, right? She is not boss man D low level popular on her own. To my knowledge, she has no hot 100 entries on her own. We don't really see her get, you know, these, she's not headlining shows. To my knowledge, she doesn't really have any crazy radio play. She doesn't, she has a social media following, but nothing crazy. So I don't know what she was thinking she was getting from this. And lastly, she really just set a bunch, took a bunch of bridges and burned them on fire, right? Now, burning bridges in life is inevitable. It doesn't matter how little of a spine you have, how much ass you kiss. There are people you're just not going to like. You're going to fall out with them and you're never going to want to work with them again, right? But falling out with Yachty here seems foolish, especially after everything Yachty said. You get what I'm saying? But that kind of wraps it up for everything I was going to say. What do you guys think of this Lil Yachty caribou thing? Uh, it's been your boy DJ T-Stop and I'm out. Peace.